morning. Good morning. We are so glad that you are with us this morning at Christ Church. If you are new or if you have been coming here your whole life, we are so glad you're here and we want you to know that you are welcome. And I want to introduce you to, um, some of you may know, but we have a newcomer, Father Michael Ellis, who's right here. He is going to be with us for um, the time that he, he does lead services as it is in the chapel. But he is going to be with us while Father Andreas is on sabbatical so that the rest of us are not running around like chickens. <laughs> and we'll do a little longer introduction of him a little bit later. Welcome. Yeah. Continue on page two. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let's pray. <clears throat> o oh God, whose blessed Son made himself known to his disciples in the breaking of bread, open the eyes of our faith that we may behold him in all his redeeming work, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the reading of God's word. the apostles. Peter addressed the people, you Israelites, why do you wonder at this? Or why do you stare at us as though by our own power or piety, we had made him walk? The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our ancestors has glorified his servant Jesus whom you handed over and rejected in the presence of Pilate, though he had decided to release him. 
but you rejected the Holy and Righteous One and asked to have a murderer given to you, and you killed the author of life, whom God raised from the dead. To this we are witnesses, and by faith in his name, his name itself has made this man strong, whom you see and know, and the faith that is through Jesus has given him this perfect health in the presence of all of you. And now, friends, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did also your rulers. In this way, God fulfilled what he had foretold through the, all the prophets, that his Messiah would suffer. Repent, therefore, and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus stood among the disciples and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, Why are you frightened? And why do, you, do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me and see, for a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While in their joy they were disbelieving and still wondering, he said to them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written, What the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. The Gospel of the Lord. start with a question. How many of you have lost someone that you loved? Right? Most of us. Maybe all of us. And you know, if you are really grieving, especially in the first days and weeks and months, you miss that person so deeply 
that it hurts? What would it be like if they suddenly appeared? What if you looked up and they were there? How would you react? This is where we find the disciples in our reading today. Three days after Jesus died, three days after their friend, their teacher, their Lord, has been crucified and died and buried, and while they have heard the rumors of his resurrection, they are still frightened and confused. They are grieving. This is understandable. It was in the midst of this grief, this fear, this doubt, that Jesus suddenly stood among them. And the disciples were terrified. Yet in their fear, their disbelief, Jesus doesn't judge them or rebuke them. He doesn't try and convince them of the truth. Instead, he does four important things. First, he says, peace be with you. Peace be with you. These words were not a greeting like saying good morning or good afternoon. His words were a profound prayer, an expression of hope. Through these words, Jesus was praying that the disciples would find peace. They were words of assurance that he would be with them in the future. And they were a source of tremendous strength for the anxious disciples. What would it mean if we said, peace be with you, to others as a prayer, as a declaration of our hope that the other person knows the presence of God in his or her life. It might mean, peace be with you. I was wrong, and you were right. Or, Peace be with you. Will you forgive me? Peace be with you. I forgive you. If we said, peace be with you to the world, it might mean something like, peace be with you. I'm ready to acknowledge that violence doesn't solve problems. It's not it doesn't stop other acts of violence or peace be with you. I love our planet and I want to consume less, share more. Next, Jesus says, touch me. Some of the commentaries are quick to point out that when Jesus does this, when he shows his hands and his feet, he, uh, he's asking for food. Um, he is simply proving that he's not a ghost. Okay, so there are ghost tests in antiquity. And the ghost tests are that if you think someone's a ghost, you can look at their hands and feet because you can see the bones there. So ghosts do not have bones. You can see if they're standing on the ground. You can look to see their teeth. Ghosts don't have teeth, I guess. And, um, and if they eat food, not a ghost. So they say, well, this is important stuff, right? Life lessons here. Um, Jesus was assuring his friends that he was not a ghost, and they should not be afraid. He was alive. He was with them. But we have to understand that he was also demonstrating that when we rise with Christ, when we rise with God, we will be bodied. We will be flesh and blood. The resurrection is bodily. Our body will be perfected and made whole, and it will be us, body and blood, with Christ. And our body, our body is holy and good. And we must love it and treat it well. And we must give thanks 
for all that our bodies can do for us and not simply complain about our shortcomings. And, and also, when Jesus invites them to touch him, he allows them to see where he has been hurt. His pain. One of the truths in this world is that if someone shares all the things that they have done well, all the perfection in their life, you feel like you don't really know them. But if somebody shares with you their, their real selves, the times that they have messed up, the things they are ashamed of, the things that are painful to them, then you feel like you know them. Because the truth is we try to impress people with our strength, but we actually connect to people through our vulnerabilities. When do you allow yourself to be vulnerable? When you are hurting, who sees your wounds without turning away? Finally, after sharing God's peace and allowing them to touch his wounds, Jesus invites them to eat. Peace, touch, eat. Jesus does these things to try and help his followers be less afraid. But the truth is, Jesus is scary. Because, as he also makes clear to the disciples, you can't know him at a distance. You can't know Jesus by spiritualizing him. This is why Jesus walks into these dark spaces like where the disciples were hiding, and he turns to the terrified friends who have no idea what is really happening, and he gives them peace, and he shows them how he has been wounded, and he asks them that crucial question, the deeply, deeply important question of, hey, what's for dinner? After Jesus is resurrected, he doesn't immediately ascend to the heavens, shining, radiant beams of glory, no. He first rejoins his friends here in the broken physical world. He eats broiled fish with his wounded hands. And when Jesus shows the disciples his hands and feet and reminds them that they all need to eat something, he is helping them to be grounded, grounding their experience of him in his humanity by caring for them in a very human way. I mean, when tragedy strikes, think of how we care for others. Many of you know that I worked for a while as a chaplain, and when I worked in the hospital, um, the tools of my trade honestly were not a Bible and a prayer book, but a prayer for peace, a gentle touch, a box of tissues, a pitcher of water, and a basket of snacks. In moments, in moments of grief and loss, we and we are afraid and doubting, all anyone can ever really do is be with us and bring us something to eat. And when that's all we have to offer, it can feel like not enough. But the truth is, that's the heart of Christianity. Presence, stories, Meals, and believing that death is not the last word. Greeting one another in peace, reaching out to one another in love, and breaking bread together have been at the center of our worship since the earliest Christian communities. In our worship, we listen to the word of God. We affirm our faith, confess our sins. And the next thing we do is pass words of peace to one another, touching one another as we do so before we gather at God's table to eat. Believing by somehow doing these things that we come closer to glimpsing this thing that is eternal life. The resurrection of Jesus, it's... It's the culmination of the story of God's love for the world. 
It's that proof that in the end, love wins. That the radical, the all-out, the self-giving love that defined Jesus' life, that's the most powerful thing in the world. It's so powerful that even death can't stop it. When Jesus appears to his disciples, he demonstrates that this power, this resurrection love power is a spiritual reality, and it's right here on earth. It's love that is enfleshed. It's demonstrated in the way we love others as we go through our ordinary, everyday lives. And this brings us to the final thing that Jesus does when he joins the disciples. After sharing God's peace, showing them his hands and feet, eating in their presence, the disciples as witnesses of Jesus are called to proclaim in his name to all nations repentance and forgiveness of sins. Jesus assures his disciples that the message of the resurrection is a message of repentance and forgiveness. And we need to live out that repentance and forgiveness in our own lives and in our relationships with one another. That's what enables us to be people of hope, trusting in God, working to live in community with one another. The message of repentance and forgiveness is central to the message of love. And when it is practiced in real life, in in big and small ways, We really do experience the power of the resurrection, of redemption and love right in our midst. Now, just like it took time for the disciples to recognize the risen Jesus and realize these implications of that resurrection for their own lives, it may take time for us to really get what it means to live as a resurrection people. Like the disciples, we may experience all the emotions, confusion, amazement, disbelief, wondering, and joy all at the same time. And just as Jesus was patient with his friends, we also need to be patient with one another and patient with ourselves. Patient with ourselves as we seek to comprehend and embody the way of the risen Jesus sharing God's love for the world. We need to show grace to each other and grace to ourselves, just as God has shown with us. Peace, touch, eat, and then forgive. Four ways to embody the love of Christ. My friends, may we continue to work for God's peace in our world. Open ourselves up to receiving the love of God into the wounded and dark places in our lives. May we allow ourselves to be fed by God's grace and to live out the grounded, embodied love that we have have freely received from God through Christ. Amen. Join me in reaffirming our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed on page 358 of the Book of Common Prayer. Page 358. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary 
and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people will be guided by Form 6 on page 392 in the Book of Common Prayer. Page 392, Form 6. In peace, we pray to you, Lord God, for all people in their daily life and work, for families, friends, and neighbors, and for those who are not. For our civilian and military personnel, Taylor Abercrombie, Parker Anderson, John Bowers, Bradley Bozen, John Caldwell, Matthew Collin, George Degener, Kyle Degener, Rachel Frederick, Douglas Hamilton, Christian Hessen, Alex Hoffman, Carol Larson, Eric Long, Matthew Rayner, Daniel Rigby, Matthew Roberts, Brandon Santiago, Colin Smith, and Stephen. For this community, the nation, and the world, for all who work for justice, freedom, and peace, for the just and proper use of your creation, for the victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression, for all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble, for those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and the needy, for the peace and unity of the Church of God, for all who proclaim the gospel and all who seek the truth, for Michael, our presiding bishop, and for our standing committee, and the bishops assisting our diocese, and for all bishops, and all other ministers, for all who serve God in this church, for the special needs and concerns of this congregation, especially Joe Hoskins, Ashley Johnson, Taylor Joyce, Jen and John Reagan, Debbie Shepard, Christy, Ken, Mary Ann Rodriguez, Nancy Walton, Monica Hawkins, Nancy and Clay George, David Verbal, Mary Lou Reinhardt, Cindy Fitch, and Nicole Villasenor. Hear us, Lord, for your mercy is great. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. We will exalt you, O King, O God, our King, and praise your name forever and ever. We pray for all who have died, that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them who put their trust in you. O oh Lord our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people. In the multitude of your mercies, look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O lover of souls. And to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, 
now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please stand. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Peace be with you. We are so glad that you are with us on this beautiful, beautiful Sunday morning. And uh, I am Mother Laura, and this is Deacon Lelia, and this is Father Michael. And we um, would, if you are new, if this is your first time here, we would love to get to know you uh, more after the service. Lela has a newcomer's table that's going to be in the dining room. In the dining room. <clears throat> so please introduce yourself. And now, I want to introduce Father Michael a little bit more. He, uh, up until two and a half years ago, you may have known him because he was the rector at St. Francis in the Field, which, as you know, was one of the church plants from Christ Church. And he was there for 16 years? 16 years. (laughs) Michael Ellis is a child of the diocese. Y'all, he he was here, and it was under Bishop Servany that he was sent to seminary, and he was ordained. He's married and has two children. His daughter lives in Crested Butte, but his son, if anybody has kids at Episcopal, his son and daughter-in-law teach at uh, English, right? right. English at, uh, at Episcopal. So we, again, we just want to welcome him. Give him, give him a little, right? <laughs> We are really glad that he is going to be with us in a larger way uh, over the next several months. So, and now we have two announcements, just two, okay? So the first is, tomorrow is the I Care Nehemiah Assembly, and it is not too late to sign up. If you are looking for a way to embody your love in action, this is it. This is it. It's going to be so important for us to join with the congregations from other churches across Jacksonville and really stand up for justice in our city. So tomorrow night at 5 o'clock, we're going to be able to meet in the dining room. We're going to have a light supper. The buses leave at 545. We, our goal is 100 people, right? 100 people. You and you and you and you and you and you. We're all going to get there and we're going to gather together. If you want to drive yourself, you can, but then you miss the fun of riding with all of us on the bus. But it's at Abyssinia Baptist Church, and uh, I would just let you know that you can sign up in the dining room today to come, and even if you don't sign up, just come and be with us. Right. Another come and be with us is the Oyster Roast, which is going to be this coming Friday. We have, you have the ability to get tickets in the dining hall this morning tickets online, or you can show up at the door, so to speak, at the tables and pay as you go in. The entrance tables where you pay and register and come in are both by the garage and also down the main walkway uh, past the preschool playground. This is a wonderful way to have great fellowship and also to invite people who aren't church people or people who are looking for a church, or people who don't know they need a church. So please um, bring friends along with you. If you are interested in volunteering, just email me, and I will find a spot for you. (laughs) Thank you. Well, I want to thank you all for the warm welcome I've received here at Christ Church. I've actually been coming here uh, almost two and a half years since I retired, and I've been sitting in the pews, resting up, first of all, but also kind of getting to know your community. And I've got to say, you have a fantastic community, and it's so welcoming, and so you've got a lot, uh, a lot to build on and to celebrate. So thank you for all of that. Let's now go to the table of the Lord. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God.
fucking people are exactly who took a shepherd boy and made him a king so I'm gonna trust you and give you everything I'll be a conqueror cause you fight for me I'll be a champion claiming your seated for our presentation for our children's choir.
understand, too, that uh, we want to invite any of the children who would like to come up, like you guys, uh, to be close by as we celebrate. Being new here, you can see whether I'm doing it right or not, okay? Great. Any other children who'd like to come up, join us? Great. Ah. So our Eucharist continues uh, in the Book of Common Prayer, page 367. Please stand. You ready, guys? The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and it is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. But chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death he has destroyed death. And by his rising to life again, he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. to sit or kneel, please. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, uh, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country where with all your saints we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, 
thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever, amen. Alleluia, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast, alleluia. The gifts of God for the people of God, take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your heart by faith with thanksgiving.
In the name of Christ Church, I send you forth bearing these holy gifts that those to whom you go may share with us in the communion of Christ's body and blood. We who are many are one body because we all share one bread and cup. Post communion prayer is page 365 of the Book of Common Prayer. Where's my piece of paper? God bless it. Thank you. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. <clears throat> May God the Father, God the Son, and God the Spirit make us one. In holiness let us unite, that we may know the risen Christ. In holiness let us unite that we may know the risen Christ. Please stand. Beloved people, go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. alleluia. alleluia.